on the fourth floor. Oh, oh, I oh, did it. Oh. I swear to you. I hope the weather holds out. Ed Cornell, single room, I made a reservation. Oh, yes, of course. Will you register, please, Mr. Cornell? Can't offer you much excitement around here, Mr. Cornell. Well, not this time of the year. Uh, I'm not looking for much excitement. I just want to sleep for a week. Well, it's very, very quiet here. <laughs> Boy! Boy! 321. <laughs> I want to talk to New York. Headquarters. We're at 14. Almost high, go ahead. Homicide. It's for you, sir. Who is it? Cornell. Ed, you're on vacation. I don't want to see you around here for another week. Chief, I'm coming back. I want that Lynn case. Oh, no. Ed, look, you're knocked out. You're overworked. Just stay away. You know my record. You, you know how many convictions I brought into that department. I've never let you down. I've never been wrong. You know I was never wrong. Yeah. This department yeah I know. Years, I, I know. I, 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 Ed, yes, I know you your record as well as you do. It's, it's, it's great, but you're not the only man in the department. Have you read the papers? Yeah. See what they say about the department, about you? Sure, you yeah. The, the, the papers are after us. I, I can read too, you know. I'm coming back and you can't talk yeah, me out. Ed, will you give the case? Will it? It's my case. Ed, will... It's my case. I'm All right. And you can't talk me out of it. Who will you if give you want to kill you, I said case. if you want to kill yourself, okay. It's, case. it's your case. I don't know why you're such an eager beaver about this, Cornell. Pretty girl. I don't like to see a pretty girl get knocked off. Didn't think you ever looked at one. Suspects? Yeah. Boys are talking to a couple of them now downstairs. Who's that? It's the sister of Jill Lynn. It's Robin Ray, the actor. He took her out a few times. There's a newspaper guy, Larry Evans. He used to plug her in his column. Steve Christopher, publicity man. He gave her the big build-up. This one. This one's my baby. 
I didn't do it. You're a liar. Why'd you do it? I didn't kill Vicky. Why did you do it? You just asked me that. I will keep on asking. We know you did it. We want to know why. Hello, Lieutenant. Anything? Nothing yet. Might be different now that you're here, sir. Hello, Mac. Hi. All right. There was another guy, wasn't there? You were jealous. No. She told you all about him. You got sore. No. Then you grabbed no, her. No, no. Then you hit her. Killed her. No, no! Sit down. All right, hold it there. Give him a cigarette. Pretty boy. That's better. Now let's hear the whole story. I told it all once. Tell it again. Tell it to me. You want to answer up, fellow? How'd you meet Vicky Lynn? Go ahead, Christopher. Tell him. Well, I... I come from the opening night of a show with Larry Evans, the columnist. We were... We were just walking, going nowhere. Why do they call it a comedy? His wife hates him, loses his money, the kid steals. Brutal, just brutal. I hope Robin isn't waiting up for the notices. Robin ought to get back to those gypsy baron parts. As a light comedian, this man's nowhere. I'll tell you one thing, though. Good notices are bad, this thing's gonna run. Are you kidding? This thing's gonna run. You know why? Robin's still a big draw in this town. He's got what impresses them, a name, publicity. Knocking your own trade, aren't you, Steve? Maybe. But the point is, I sold him to the public, and they'll go and see him. They like to see famous people. Whereas me, sometimes I like to look at a completely new person. Mm. Nice. Nice. Coffee. Coffee. Robin Ray's been sold to the public like any successful product. Like a brand of coffee. Uh, now, who's to blame for that? Well, the point is, it can be done. You can sell them anything if you go about it right. And why waste time on a cornball like Robin Ray? Well, that's simple. He pays me. My job is to... Cream and sugar? No, thanks. Just black. We're in mourning. It's our show, huh? In a manner of speaking. You're lucky. Working nights, you never get to see anything. Probably a frustrated actress. Are you uh, a frustrated actress? Nope. No talent, no ambition. No ambition, huh? You could do better than this. You're pretty. Prettier than Robin Ray. What's wrong with this? It's my first job in New York. They treat me all right. I got Saturdays and Sundays off. And tired feet. Haven't you thought about uh, making a stab at something else? This lad could help you. Your coffee's getting cold. <laughs> Look, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you my, uh, address here. Uh, this is my office. And, uh, if you're interested, uh, we should stop around sometime. My card. Steve Christopher, public relations. Public? Strictly. Well, thank you. I'll put it in my file. He means it. It's just his way of saying that you don't belong in a place like this. Sure, how many guys come in and tell you that? You're the very first tonight. I never expected to see her again. But next day, she turned up at the office. And she was wrong about no ambition. She was loaded with it, right from the beginning. That night, I took her to the Club Capri to show her off to Cafe Society. She did all right. In fact, she was the toast of the table. Well, at Wayner, Steve. Hi, there. Oh, darling. There's someone here you simply must meet. Vicky Lynn. Hi, Vicky. Hi. We've met. I'd gone on the line for some fancy clothes for her, and well, it didn't hurt to have Larry Evans show up and make like he and Vicky were old friends. Still, I, I had to admit that Vicky had what it takes. Tell us all the gossip. Why, you can read it tomorrow in my column. I know he's afraid to repeat it in mixed company. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. You sure? Every once in a while, I have an impulse to get up and clear the table. Fight it. <laughs> oh, Robin Ray. Mr. Ray, hello. How do you do? How are you? 
Hello, Steve. Hello, Robin. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, my dear. How well, are you? Robin, obviously you're here for one reason. Miss Lynn, may I present Robin Ray, star of stage, screen, and toothpaste endorsements. Hello. How do you how do? You? <laughs> he looks even younger in person. You know, Steve, I could grow very fond of this girl. Well, while you're growing, how about standing still for a picture? Wonderful. Come on. I don't know if I was jealous of Robin, or maybe I was already thinking of Vicky as my property. Anyway, I didn't like his moving in like that. So I took care of the situation by moving Vicky out. I asked her to dance. Robin wasn't happy, but at that moment, I wasn't concerned about Robin. I had plans for Vicky, things I wanted to discuss with her. I didn't want Robin panting down our necks while we talked. You better be thinking of taking me Hello. home. It's almost midnight. Hi. Oh. Say, midnight's never been a reason to go home. Remember Cinderella? This is all wonderful, but the ball's almost over, and tomorrow I'll be back clearing those tables. You're wrong, Vicky. The ball is just beginning. Your picture in the paper with Robin, Plugs and Larry's column, you're on your way. And with me promoting you, well, you can be the town's top model to start with. And from there, well, we'll see when you get there. Then last night wasn't just a, a gag. Maybe it was then. But promotion's my business, Vicky. And I know you can make it. Oh, it'll be hard work, but it's yours if you want it. Of course I wanted Steve. Said last night you had no ambition. Last night I didn't have you. Then it's a deal? Let's drink to it. Nothing for me. A uh, brandy, please. Now then, I want you to repeat after me. I, Vicky Lynn. <laughs> I, Vicky Lynn. Do solemnly swear. <laughs> Do solemnly swear. To wear the clothes, say the things, go to the places, and be the girl that Steve Christopher orders. End of oath. That Steve Christopher orders. End of oath. <laughs> she was so nervous she started to get up when Robin came along. Oh, Steve. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. But the price tag coming out of the glove, that was the great. Oh, oh. stop teasing her, Steve. She was wonderful. Oh, of course Thanks. she was. <laughs> Harry, can I have my key? Right there. Give the lady her key, Harry. Thanks. Well, Vic, brace yourself and get ready. Tomorrow we launch the promotional campaign of the century. Get used to seeing your name in the paper. I'll make it a habit in the column. I feel like Vicky Lynn Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> well, meet the new stockholder. Who let you into this corporation? I did. Mm -hmm. She could do a lot worse than have her name tied up with mine. I don't see how. We'll take that up at the board meeting right now. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Well, I wish I could ask you up, but... But Cinderella has a cruel stepmother. No. <laughs> Cinderella has a sister. Sound sleep. Well, good night, and thanks for everything. I'll be around first thing in the morning, Vic. I'll be waiting. Sister? I hate girls with sisters. But in her case, you'll make an exception. Hmm. But still, it could be worse. Some girls have husbands, I hear. And I know where you heard it. From their husbands. <laughs> hey, how'd you like to give me back my magazine? Sure, Harry. You had to get rough with the kid. I didn't get rough. I just didn't like him. But so you were quick-tempered, the way a killer would be. When his girl threw him over. Ah, uh, that temper will get you into trouble, Christopher. Then try talking sense. That's what you're here for. What made you so sure you could make anything out of Vicky Lynn? Look, promotion's my business. She had looks, she was young, she had a good figure. What more do you want? I want the truth. You're hearing it. Give it to me again and give it to me straight. I'm checking everything you say. Is anyone done any talking? Yeah, the lieutenant. Vicky Lynn was your sister. 
How long have you lived in New York? A little over two years. And your sister? Ten months. She came here from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, after Mom died. To live with me. And I wanted to see more of her, but I didn't. Why was that? Oh, she... Well, you see, I work days. I'm a public stenographer at the Wilton Hotel on 44th Street. And I work days, and Vicky worked night at the cafeteria. And we just kept different hours, that's all. What do you know about Steve Christopher? Well, not much. Except that he was the one that gave her all his big ideas about being a celebrity. Oh, I know that was his business, but just the same. When did this start? Well, the first I knew about it was one night when I'd brought a lot of work home from the office. It got very late, and I guess I must have fallen asleep. Vicki? Uh-huh? What time is it? Oh, I don't know. It must be late. Oh, how's the job? Guys still peeking through the window at you? They weren't peeking tonight, honey. Oh. They were staring. Well, I don't blame them. Hey! What? what is this? You like it? Well, sure, I love it, but I must be dreaming what happened. Everything. Compliments of the house. I've been waltzing at the Club Capri, and I had my picture taken with an actor, Robin Ray. And Larry Evans, the columnist, sat right at our table. And Jill, I'm going to be a model. Oh, honey, you must be dreaming. No, it's all true. And I'm never going back to that dirty old job at the cafeteria. What did you say? I've been wasting my time, Jill. I've just found out I can be somebody. Oh, that did it. That woke me up. Vicki, you can't be serious about giving up your job. Sure I can. I was only waiting around for something better to turn up. Men want to look at me, let them pay for it. Vicki Lynn, you, you've gone right out of your mind. No, I'm using my head. Besides, I'm not doing this all on my own. I've got a sponsor. That means what it meant in Harrisburg. Is <laughs> oh, no. Silly. Really, I've got three sponsors. There's Robin, and there's Larry, and there's Steve Christopher. Actually, it was Steve's idea. Well, just who is this Steve Christopher? Oh, everybody knows who Steve is. He's a publicity man. A promoter. Sounds a little bit to me like he might be promoting himself to the head of the class. Oh, that isn't it at all. This is strictly business. Vicky, come here. Remember, when Mom died, we promised to look out for each other. I don't want to ever stand in your way or anything like that, but don't you think this is all a little sudden and foolish? Oh, why should I think that? Oh, honey, important people like this, this Steve, Christopher, and the others, what do they want with people like us? But, Jill, they're helping me. In what way? Well, they're going to make me a glamour girl. I know all this started as a gag, but after the way things went tonight, I know I can get to the top and fast. Oh, honey, sometimes things can happen too fast. Your face can be on a magazine cover one week and it can be in the ash can the next. Thank you, dear. I know I sound stuffy. I don't mean to. I just want to make sure that you're sure. You know, sometimes when you get started on something like this, there, there's no turning back. I know what you mean, Jill. But I am sure. I, I've got the face and the figure for it. Steve said so. There are so many things I want. Now I know how to get them. Okay. Well... If it's the face and figure that are going to do it, we'd better put the bankroll to bed. Vicky, I think that man is here. Get it, will you? I'm just putting on a dress. Morning. You're Vicky's sister? Vicky is my sister. Well, I'm Steve Christopher. And uh, you can put the weapon down. I'm harmless. I wonder. 
May I come in? Oh, by all means, enter. Thank you. I'm afraid you won't find anything very elegant, but we call it home. <sighs> you know, most homes have a welcome mat. I'll put one in when I'm sure it belongs. Look, if you're worried about Vicky... Why shouldn't I be? You should see her. She's, she's up in the air. She's quitting her job. And, and for what? For this. Just for a beginning. Well... Where are you in this? Oh, I don't believe in that for myself. I'm not publicizing Steve Christopher. Mm, modesty? No. Business. Ah, here's our glamour girl. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. That's some dress you put on. Oh, look, it's me. Mm-hmm. And there's more. Larry Evans, column, lead item. Vicki Lynn, a new face with that old magic. Three model agencies after me. Is that right, Steve? No, but Monday there will be five of them after this. Steve Christopher, you're a genius. Isn't he wonderful, Jill? The final vote isn't in yet. From that day on, Steve Christopher saw to it that she was seen everywhere. First, it was just a few of the smart magazines. And then it was nearly all of the magazines at one time or another. After that, it was subway posters. And then billboards. She was everywhere. Steve Christopher didn't miss a bit. In a few minutes, he even had Vicky singing at the Club Capri. Why do breezes sigh every evening? Whispering your name as they do. And why have I the feeling stars are on my ceiling? I know why and so do you. worked hard for her. I'll have to admit that. And he protected her when she needed it, even while he was pushing her ahead. And everything that pleased her seemed to please him. Until one night, about two months later, there was an argument. You don't have to stay if you don't want to, you know. I've always liked fireworks. I want to be here when they go off. Joe, pour me a drink, will you, dear? Make it two? No, thanks. Soda, Miss Lynn? No, just straight. Why should there be fireworks? They've got nothing to beef about, Steve especially. Why not let Steve decide that when he gets here? I don't see why you're taking Steve's side. Unless... Unless what? Unless... Maybe you're in love with him. Vicky, how... I just said maybe. But if it is true, you ought to be happy about all this. With me out of the way, you'll have him all to yourself. I'm going home. You better wait. We've got company. Steve, darling. Hello, Vicky. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Hello, Joe. Hello. Well, what's the deal, Vic? You better sit down. You won't have so far to fall. <laughs> well, something terrible's happened. I don't know quite how to begin. It's rather embarrassing. I know you've both done so much for me, but... Well, life's strange, isn't it? We're never sure what's going to happen next. What is going to happen next, Vicky? I'm going away. Where? Well, I couldn't help it, really. I... 
I didn't ask them. They came to me. Hollywood? Yes, Hollywood. You see, they wanted to give me a screen test, and well, I didn't see any harm in it, so I said yes. I didn't want to mention it for fear it wouldn't pan out. But it did. I was terrific. So the next thing I knew, they had signed me up. Mm -hmm. When are you going? Tomorrow night. Congratulations. Me too. Well, are we going to have a drink on it? All right, Joe, give me one. We're all very gay, aren't we? You'd think I just died or something. <laughs> Maybe you have. Well, going to Hollywood isn't a crime, you know. No, no, of course not. I, I said congratulations. Well, don't we still friends? Vicky, why didn't you tell me about this? I know what you're thinking. You gave me my start and all that. But it was me they were interested in. I've got what it takes, and you didn't invent it. Now, I'll pay you back every cent you spent on me. Vicki, I'm sure Steve's not interested in that. I'm not interested in that. That I have written off, and you too. What I am interested in is some contracts I have here at the club for magazines Who that... signed these contracts, Steve? Well, I did, but... I... Then you worry about them, darling. Oh, brother. Remind me not to hang around cafeterias anymore. The things you can pick up there. Sure, I was sore. Not about the money, or even about the contracts I was stuck with. It was her ingratitude. Nobody likes to be played for a sucker. Oh, you killed her. No, wise guy. I got together with Larry and Robin the next day, and we did what anybody would do. We got loaded. I'm going. Robin, pay the man. It's you around. Uh -huh. Oh. Huh. Amongst my souvenirs. To Prince Charming from Cinderella. <laughs> to Prince Same Thing from Guess Who. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was ever any one man that Vicky took seriously. She always used to say that there'd be lots of time to look around after she got what she wanted. When she was working at the cafeteria, did you ever hear of her having trouble with anybody? The boss, maybe? Guys in the kitchen? No, not that I can... Wait a minute. There was something queer that happened. I didn't think much of it at the time, but... It was late one night, and I was sitting in the cafeteria waiting for her to finish work. It was just a few minutes before she left. I'll just be a minute, sis. Okay. Sure. You've got an unknown admirer. There's a guy out there really giving you the eye. Oh, don't let it bother you, honey. Everybody window shops. Doesn't mean a thing. The next time I went there, I saw him again. He never said anything, never really bothered us, but, but it frightened me all the same. I didn't mention it to Vicky anymore. I, I knew she'd just laugh at me. But there was something about him, something in the way he looked at her, that perhaps if you could find that man, you'd find the murderer. Mysterious stranger, huh? You'll have to do better than that, young lady. Why are you trying to protect Steve Christopher? Protect? I'm not trying to protect him or anybody. Why should I? You were in love with him, weren't you? It's a lie. So much in love with him, you couldn't see straight. Only he didn't give you a tumble, isn't that right? 
But you fixed all that by eliminating the competition. No! Vicky seemed to think so. Didn't she say, with me out of the way, you'll have them all to yourself? Oh, she didn't mean it like that. Still, that's what she said. And she is out of the way. You could have put her there. Stop it! Stop it! Nobody has a right to say a thing like that to me. Let me talk to somebody else. Who's in charge of this case? I'll get Cornell. That's the way it was. Each of us got a knife. Right between the shoulder blades. Lieutenant, you want it inside. Okay. All right, miss. Here's the head man. That's him. That's the man. Hmm? She says she saw a mysterious stranger peeking through the window of the joint where her sister worked. Now she says it's you. How about it, Ed? Do you peek through windows? Yeah. Sure. There's something to look at. Relax, sister. That's my district. That's my job, peeking at people. Your sister was pretty. A lot of people might have looked at her. Oh, this is the man. All I right, I'm a peeping Tom. Sit down. Sit down! There. Drink this, you'll feel better. Steve Christopher saw your sister and you once after she told him she was going to Hollywood. Whose idea was that? Mine, mostly. After I walked out of the Club Capria, I waited outside. When Steve came out, I persuaded him to take Vicky and me for a ride. I wanted them to sort of square things off before she left. What difference could that make to you? What difference? None, except I liked Steve. I loved my sister. I understood how angry he was with Vicky. I didn't want him to do anything that would hurt her career. I knew how much it meant to her. What happened on that ride? They didn't get together. What was said? Nothing of any importance. Come on! We, we just rode along the parkway. He was still very angry at her. He said anything at all. For about ten minutes, I tried to bridge the gap. Well, it's, it's a nice night anyway. I'm glad you're enjoying it. This was your idea. All right, I made a little mistake. I'm sorry. Your apologies accepted. The case is closed. Just like that. Look, Steve. To show we're still friends, how about driving me to the airport tomorrow? <laughs> well, why not? When you've been taken this far, you might as well go the whole distance. Oh, now, Steve, that's not fair. A year from now, Vicky will be a big star, and then you'll be proud of her. Yeah, hooray for Vicky. Three cheers! I know what you're thinking. You're glad to get rid of me. I am? Why? Ask Jill. She knows. Oh, Vicky, don't be silly. <sighs> Let's go back now, shall we? Well, Vicky said to Christopher, you'll be glad to get rid of me. Is that it, word for word? Oh, but, but she, she didn't mean what that. What she meant, we'll never know, Miss Lynn. All, only what she said. How, how and when did you find the body? It was about five. It was about 5.30, I gotten home early from the office. There was radio music coming from the apartment. Just came in. Just a second. 
I'm just gonna take her to the airport. And... Jill. You don't think that might... Is she... Operator, get me the police. Thanks very much, Miss Lynn. You've been most helpful. Well, I give up. You boys give up too easily. We've only been here all night. What did Vicki Lynn mean when she said you'll be glad to get rid of me? Where'd you get that? What did she mean? Why, she... I'll tell you what she meant. She knew you hated her for running out on you. You thought about her all that night and the next day until you were so jealous you couldn't stand it, and then you went up to her apartment, but not to take her to the airport. You went up there and killed her. That's not true. It is true. I ought to kill you myself. Pretty boy. Lieutenant, the chief wants to see Christopher in his office right away. Take him with you. Riding him pretty hard, aren't you, Ed? I haven't started. Why? I've been in this game 15 years. And that's a guilty man. He was found with her. With the body. What do you want? Good morning, Mr. Christopher. I'm afraid we owe you an apology. Thanks. Sit down, please. Hello, Jill. The fact is, somebody has made an unfortunate mistake. I've just been telling Miss Lynn here that it seemed so logical you were the guilty one. It did. What uh, seems logical now? Sit down. Well, now we think we know the identity of the killer. Oh? A kid by the name of Harry Williams, switchboard boy at the apartment house. We've just discovered he's been missing since 5.30 yesterday afternoon. It's only a question of hours before we pick him up. Well, that's a relief. Did you hear that, Jill? Yes. Do you mind if I go now? I'm not feeling too well. Not in the least, Miss Lynn. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Before you go, Christopher, I hope you haven't been too inconvenienced. No, no. No, not at all. Jill? Jill! Look, don't be like that. We've both been through the same siege. Shouldn't that make us friends? I, I don't know. Jill, I'm sorry you had to tell them about that ride. I'm afraid it didn't sound too good. I, I couldn't help it. They got it out of me. Vicki didn't know what she was saying. Yes, I know that. I, I tried to tell them. Jill, can I take you home? No, I'd rather not. I, I don't want any reminders around for a while.
One of these times you're going to talk. You're going to talk in your sleep, and when that time comes, I want to be around. You got a warrant? Mm-hmm. I'm doing this on my own time. Then get out on your own time. Get out. You don't seem to realize I'm doing you a favor. I'm keeping you posted on the progress of the case. For instance, I found a cigarette button in Vicky's clothes closet. There was an evening slipper in there, too, with a crushed heel. Somebody waited in there. You smoke in clothes closets? No, I don't smoke in clothes closets. That's good. It's very good. Except it uh, happened to be your brand. Mine and 10 million more. Maybe it was a mass murder. I know it doesn't mean much by itself. But when I put all my evidence together, I'll have you strapped in that chair so tight you will scream. Maybe I ought to keep you posted on this case. They told me down at headquarters they know it was Harry Williams. I think they're wrong. Everybody out of step but you is at it. I've never made a mistake. <sighs> Steve, thanks for everything. Everything? Stevie, you want her all for yourself, huh? First her, and now a sister, maybe, huh? I'll bet when you were a kid, you wrote dirty words on fences. Don't try that again. I won't. I don't want a hair out of place. I want you spick and span for the chair. Get out! Stevie, boy, relax. In the long run, it's not muscles that count. Brains. and Robin Ray and Larry Evans in the Lynn case. You want to see me, Chief? Not for long. You're falling on your face, Cornell. Now that Harry Williams is out of the running, you're right back where you started. Nothing. Well, I wouldn't say that. I've got my suspicions. Well, that's just dandy. I'll have the DA's office make a note of it. What do you mean, suspicions? I thought you said Williams cleared himself. Oh. I'm not talking about Williams. I'm talking about Steve Christopher. Christopher? Christopher? All I hear from you is Christopher. What about some of the others? This ham actor here, for instance, or Larry Evans. Let's sweat him a little. You better leave Evans alone until you get something definite on him. He might give you a bad notice. All right, bring in the actor. He couldn't kill fleas. Did I ask your opinion? I want him brought down here this afternoon. All right. But you're wasting your time. You mind if I bring in Steve Christopher, too? May I ask why? No special reason. I just like to have him around. Uh, please. Relax. Be like me. Thanks. You got nothing to worry about if you don't let the bulls push you around. That way they respect you. Now, take me. I tell them off. They don't pull nothing on Robbie. me. Robbie. Yes, sir. We're through with you. Beat it. Yes, sir. Robin. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm their favorite guest. I think they'd like to make it permanent. Of course, the whole thing is perfectly ridiculous. I had nothing to do with it. I only came here to be obliging. Tell me, Steve, 
How do they go about these things? I mean, what do they do to you? Robin, it'd spoil the fun if I told you. Oh. Look, look, slow down. Take it easy. You're not on trial here. Of course not. I hope. All right, this way. After you. Sit down over there. Steve, what happens now? I don't know. This is new to me. And not repeat what I've said before. How many ways can I say I miss you? And skip the ever familiar rhymes. How many times do I have to kiss you? Don't make it less than Stop it! a million times. Stop it! Stop it! You can't do this! Let me get out of here! Let me get out! Bring him up to my office. I couldn't help it. I couldn't stand watching her looking so alive and knowing she was dead. It wasn't fair to do that to Vicky. When I first met her, I went along with that publicity build-up. She was just another good-looking girl, but... something happened. I fell in love with her. Then one day I told her. But she laughed. She thought it was a joke. But I still felt the same way about her, even after that. On the day Vicky was murdered, in the afternoon, where were you? I'm not sure. You had to be someplace, home, out for a walk. Vicky Lynn's apartment? No. Where were you? I don't know. I do. He was visiting. A nightclub cigarette girl in her apartment. I felt foolish after she turned me down. I was trying to prove to yeah, myself we don't, that... We don't need any details. You can go now. Thanks. You're still it, pretty boy. Is that all for today? It's all for today. No statements. Please, please, fellow, let me go. Hey, Steve, with Robin cleared, where does this leave you? Ask Cornell. He knows everything. Tough lad to have on your tail. He's never been wrong, they say. He's never been wrong, he says. Say, Lieutenant. Not now. I thought I had this done before you got here. I'm back working. But I put that down. Oh, you got me wrong, Miss Lynn. I just went over to see my folks in Newark for a couple of days. I didn't know it was going to cause such a storm. I explained everything to the cops. But I, I thought that... Well, you shouldn't have thought a thing like that. You don't think I'd do that, do you? Well, do you? No, Harry, I, I don't. The superintendent told me you were coming back to get your sister's things, and I thought I'd have them packed for you. Well, you shouldn't have done that, not without permission. Well, I thought it might help. I didn't think you'd want to do it alone. Well, it's all right, as long as it's done. Will you help me get these things down into the cab? Oh, sure. Just a second, Miss Lynn. Hello? Huh? Yeah. All right, so I was busy someplace else. It's Mr. Christopher for you. Oh, well, tell him that I'm not in, that, that I've gone away. She's gone away. 
He wants to know where you've gone. Say there's no forwarding address. There's no forwarding address. <laughs> Why was he sore? He says he's been ringing for 15 minutes. Taxi! Was the funeral nice? It was very quiet. I wanted to come. Well, why didn't you, Harry? I didn't think it was my place. Harry the doll. Don't step on it. Harry. Goodbye, Miss Lynn. Harry, thanks for helping me with the bags and everything. I want your money. Questions? You've asked enough questions already. You want to find the man who killed your sister, don't you? Of course I do. Maybe I can help you. Maybe we can help each other. We're after the same thing. Nice place. You know, you can tell a lot about people by their books. Good book. Huh? Oh, Vicky's? Yes. It's too bad she can't talk. She was there. I think you know a lot more than you're telling. Especially about Steve Christopher. Well, that's not true. I've told you everything I know. What more can there be? If I knew that, I wouldn't be here. I know what you're going through. But that guy played your sister for a sucker, and when she tried to run out on him, he let her have it. I don't believe that. You're in love with him. No. Yes, you are. I know it, and your sister knew it. You're in love with him, and you're trying to cover up for him. But it won't work. I'll get him with or without your help. I'll get him. He's guilty. And you'd better play along with me. Get out. Get out. You keep telling yourself he's in a you? but you're not certain. And that's what's driving you crazy. You look up in his face, puts his hands on you, and you like that. Do you think maybe they're the hands that killed Vicky? I haven't even seen him. I'd keep it that way if I were you. Because I'm going to haunt both of you like a guilty conscience. Steve Christopher, please. Hello, Steve. This is Jill Lynn. Look, are you free tonight? I I've got to see you. 
Oh, good. Eight o'clock. Oh, that's right, you're down it. It's 3.33 East 29th. Good, I'll be ready. What are you thinking about? I was remembering the last time in here, when Vicky made her big announcement. And I remember the first time that she came home from here, full of big plans. Steve. What? What is it, Jim? Were you? In love with her. With Vicky? No. Cornell seems to think so. He, he came by to see me. Cornell thinks something else, too. He's wrong on both counts. You believe that, Joe? I want to. Look, Jill, I, I, I know it looks bad for me with Williams in the clear, but just have to ask you to trust me. As for Vicky, I... I know I tried to rush her too fast into something that she wasn't ready for. But as for being in love with her... Look, Jill, when a man loves a woman, he doesn't want to plaster her face on every billboard in town. He wants to keep her to himself. For himself. Steve, I can tell you now why I called you. There's something in the apartment, something in Vicky's that, that I want you to have. Steve, I was going through some of Vicky's things. And I, I happened to come across this. Oh, <laughs> way, Ash, Vicky. After the way you behaved last night, the sooner you're out of the way, the better. It was the day she was leaving. I sent her an orchid to wear on the plane and this with it. I know what you meant by it, but I don't think anyone else would. Why didn't you turn this in? First, I had to be sure about you, Steve, and, and now I am. Jill, I... I'd like to keep that. Easy. Now, pretty boy, let's try these on for size, huh? Put his hands up there. Put them up there! I see. Put it in writing. <gasps> you were holding out on me, weren't you? Mona Lisa time. This is real nice, Stevie boy. You and me being alone like this. I've been looking forward to it. You're crazy, Cornell. You're trying to railroad me. Oh, Stevie, you bought the ticket. I'm just holding it for you. Anybody could have written Anybody that. Anybody didn't. You did. I found these in your apartment. Exhibit A, a pair of brass knots. You never found them. Stevie the... boy. Vicky was hit behind the ear with a weapon about the size of a fist. Only much harder, remember? It's a frame you planted, don't you? That's what they all say. I got a cop saw me take these out of your bureau. Did he see you put them there, too? I forgot to ask him. 
Stevie, you shouldn't have tried to resist arrest. Slug me with those Cornell, and I'll square you off if it takes me the rest of my life. You're not going to have a very long life, Stevie. You're like a rat in a box without any holes. But they're going to make a hole for you. Six by three, filled with quick <laughs> Get out of here right away. Your hands. Oh, do you suppose someone heard? They must have. These walls are so thin. We've got to get out quickly. Is there another way out? Yes, upstairs. Quick, I'll show you. Go. The police will be everywhere. I don't know. I have to think. I... But you can't go home. They'll find you. I have to figure someplace where no one will look for me. Is there? No. Listen. There's an all-night movie down on Lower Third, the Avon. I could stay there tonight. Maybe, maybe I could think of some way to get out of all this. No, Steve. You've got to get away. Out no, of town. No, no. You'll only run away when you're guilty. But if they find you... I'll worry about that later. I'm only sorry that you're in this. Oh, I couldn't help it. When I saw you standing there so helpless and that, that vulture bullying you. Yeah, vulture's a word for it. Vicky called him that. He infuriated me so much that I just had to strike out at something. Was that the only reason? No. Joe, Vicky was right about us. over to the other side. I have to get rid of these some way. Uh, there's a repair shop where I park the car sometimes. There might be a hacksaw there. You take the car. The keys are in it. Can't we be together? No, we can't. Oh, Steve. Listen, our chances are better if we separate. The place is at 64th Street in the river. It closes at 11. Meet me there at midnight. Oh, I wish there was something I could do. Don't look so worried. You'll have to help me cut out these off. Are you handy with a hacksaw? Homicide. This is Cornell. I want an alarm sent out for Jill Lynn and Steve Christopher. They may be in his car. Check the number. Just pick them up, that's all. I'll have a charge on file when you bring them in. Car, let's go. Get in the car. We're going downtown. Come here. Take a look around. Okay. Clark, come on.
Blake? Yes, Ed. Anything on Christopher? Nothing yet. You know, he picked up the girl. Yeah, they told me. You want to see her? I don't want to see anybody but Christopher, and I want him picked up. And if he tries anything, let him have it. Okay. Ed, you look awfully beat. If anything comes up, we can phone you at home. Yeah, do that. Call it a night. Morning, Ed. Here's the stuff on Jill Lynn. I made it assaulting an officer. We can write our own ticket later. Mac, do you ever read a book on butterflies by a guy named Faber? Not being a butterfly, I was never interested. Now, if you'll just sign these. Well, this Faber was a naturalist. And once he got hold of a very rare female butterfly worth a thousand bucks, kept it in a glass box. But what he really wanted was the male of the species. Nobody had ever been able to capture one. You know what he did? Advertised. Mm -hmm. He turned a female loose. In 24 hours, he had the male in the net. Did you get the point? The house doesn't have to fall on me. Turn Jill Lynn loose, and we'll have Christopher in 24 hours. This doesn't work, Ed. The chief will pull the rug out from under you. You know that. Turn loose! Oh, boss. Force a confession out of me. You've been holding out, and I want to know why. It'll be easier for you if you tell the truth. What difference does it make what I say? If you mind, I'm guilty. Are you? Don't tell me you have any doubts. This seat is taken, baby. Can't, oh, please. Do I have to have those lights in my face? Jill. Thanks. No, oh. I didn't. Quiet, quiet, please. Then why? Steve, I was, I was so afraid I wouldn't find you. Yeah, I'm sure glad you did. I've seen this picture four times. You know who killed Lady Battersley? The butt. Listen, did you find out anything? Did you get anywhere? Oh, I've been checking all afternoon. Couldn't dig up a thing. Well, listen, I think I may have. What? I'm not quite sure what it means. 
I thought you might. I found these. They, they're cards that the florist sent me. They were on flowers sent to Vicky at the cemetery. And there's six of them with the same message. Because I promised. You told me last night you decided not to. Because I promised. Why? Until tomorrow. That's the way Larry Evans signs off his column. Uh, Larry Evans? Uh, may we have it a little bit quiet, please? Some of us are trying to enjoy the pictures. Come on. I want to talk to you, Larry. I don't mind people dropping in, Steve, but some other time, huh? I got a column to turn out. What do you know about Vicky's murder? What I read in the papers. What do you know? I know this. You've been sending flowers every day to her grave. Oh. So you found out about that, have you? It's easy to explain. I promised her. Promised her? Uh-huh. Let me get a cigarette. <laughs> Just thought I'd try it. Make a good story if I could bring you in myself. Swell. What do you mean you promised to send Vicky flowers? It was like this. On the day of the murder, after I'd taken her down to pick up Wait a minute. Ticket. You were with Vicky the afternoon she was murdered? Sure. Why didn't you tell the police that? You told them your story. Look what it got you. All right, never mind. Go on. When we got back to her place, she found out she'd forgotten her key. So we went to the desk to pick up the pass key. The pass key wasn't there, and neither was the kid who ran the switchboard. Well, I give up. We'll just have to wait around till Harry gets back. From what I've seen of that boy, he could be gone for hours. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll climb up the fire escape and let you in. Oh, Larry Evans, you'd never do anything so gallant. Oh, no? Where is it? Down the court, I think. <laughs> I'm an old fire escape man from way back. <laughs> Get most of my items that way. <laughs> We were expecting you, your ladyship. Larry, you're a doll. You know, now that I'm going away, I, I really feel a little sad. Forget it. If I didn't think I'd be a success, I'd never dream of doing a thing like this. You'll make it. You've got a heart made out of rock candy. You won't forget me, will you? Not for at least two weeks. Well, two weeks isn't a very long time, do you think? Well, it is for a columnist. Listen, I'll do you a favor. For the first two weeks, I'll send you flowers. It'll make a big impression out there where you're going. Oh, that'd be terrific. You promise? Promise. Her. A promise is a promise. I hope it still makes an impression wherever she is. Besides, I thought it'd make a great Sunday column. What happened after that? I left. Was the kid back at the switchboard when you went downstairs? No, I, I remember the board was buzzing as I passed by. Well, that's odd. Gone so long. Was there anything unusual about the apartment when you went in? Yes, now that you mention it, there was cigarette smoke in the bedroom. I thought maybe Jill had just left. Well, Jill was still at the office. Wait a minute. I... I remember she told me when she went back to get Vicky's things, there was a cigarette burning in the... Thanks, Larry. Stand still, Mac. Put that gun away. We've got enough on you as it is. <laughs> Not until you hear me out. I've got a line on the real killer, but I need your help. Sorry, Steve. I'm on the other side of the fence. Okay, I'll make you a proposition. If you'll trust me for just half an hour, I'll trust you. I guess half an hour won't do much harm. 
Just in case, I'll take this. into her apartment with a pass key and you waited for her. When Larry Evans came through the window to let her in, you hid in the closet. After Evans left, you came out and you tried to grab her. No. She screamed, you no. got scared, and you hit her with this. No! I didn't know what I was doing, I swear! When she screamed, I got scared! I didn't know, I didn't know! Sure, 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 sure. I understand. Do you? Do you? Sure, Harry. I told the cop how I was when he traced me to Newark. He said he understood, too. He said he understood how anybody would want to kiss her. He told me just to come back here and to keep quiet. It'd be all right. He said he'd forget all about it. What cop? The big one. Ed Cornell. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. You understand, don't you? It's all right. And... Yes, sir, it's all right. Come on, let's go. <laughs> come on, come on. innocent all the time. Come on down, Joe. He confessed. Oh, Steve, thank heaven. I'll be right down. Mac, I'm gonna ask you one more favor. Five minutes alone with Cornell. Okay, I guess you got it coming to you. But exactly five minutes after you get there, I'll be around. Thanks. Give yourself up. I don't have to. Just had a talk with Harry Williams. Yeah. Let's 
have been very enlightening. It was. Very. You're a sick man, Cornell. Hmm. You knew all the time it was Harry Williams. Sure, I'm not dumb. You knew it, and yet you wanted to hang it on me. Why? Why didn't you go after him? He was the one who killed her. Vicky was dead for me from the time you set eyes on her. You're the one who really killed her. You're the one who took her away from me, not him. Don't make me laugh, Cornell. You never had a chance with her. Yeah, I can guess I'll say funny to you. Worm like me. Looking up at a woman like that. I used to hang around that cafeteria at night just to be sure she got home safe. She seemed really grateful, friendly. Had a cup of coffee together. I guess a cup of coffee's not very much to hang your hopes on. But I didn't need much. I started to hope. Hope we'd get to know each other better. I might even get up enough courage to ask you to marry me someday. Took this apartment and started to furnish it with things I thought she'd like. I was going to surprise her with it. And you came along. Put big ideas in her head. She was a glamour girl. Why didn't you leave her alone? Nobody took Vicky away from you, Cornell. She hated you. Hmm. For the way you were always watching her and following her. She used to call you the vulture. No. This is the end of the line, Cornell. They're gonna put you away. I ought to kill you for what you've done. Yes, Stevie. Stevie, you do that. You, you kill me, Stevie. I could be with her. Then I'd like crazy. Stevie, Cornel. you, you do that. Stop it. You true, Cornell. You hear what he said? You hear? No, there won't be anyone to change the flowers now. Steve. I was saying. Good morning, kid. <laughs> 